pioneered the use of brainwave entrainment to improve clarity, sleep, and energy, and it remains at the forefront of scientific research. He founded BrainTap with the goal of making this technology accessible to everyone. BrainTap offers over a thousand original audio sessions in 12 languages and serves a worldwide user base with its mobile app and headset. Dr. Porter has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, People, Entrepreneur, and on ABC, NBC, CBS as an expert in brain health and wellness. And in 2020, Dr. Porter received the IAFNR Lifetime Achievement Award. Wow. <laughs> Those are quite the accolades, Dr. Yeah. Porter. And I'm going to welcome you to my podcast. I'm excited to talk all about this. Well, thank you for having me, Sandy. It's great to be here. Yeah. And, you know, I've been using the device myself over the last few weeks because I feel it's important for me to be able to share some of the ways in which it can help. But, you know, I do feel the most important thing is to first talk to you and ask you how you got started in this industry. What pushed you to develop a product like this? Well, well, my dad was a chronic alcoholic, so I grew up in a house, you know, a typical Irish Catholic house where, you know, drinking was around the holidays, especially, and in different things, that was a real high priority for the family, but it wasn't good for the family, right? So yeah. the church came over and actually taught my dad how to do something called the ultra relaxation seminar through the Silva method. And then my dad, it helped him to stop drinking. And he became one of the first instructors of the Silva method that, that is still active across the country. There's millions of people using it. So I grew up uh, attending seminars. My dad, I would help him do, he would do two seminars a month through Lower Michigan. We grew up in Battle Creek, Michigan. And uh, we were already into health. My mother was very health-minded. The very first health food store in, a, in the world was in Battle Creek, Michigan because of Dr. Kellogg. So she went to an iodologist and our, our family was taken off sugar, white flour. Our, our philosophy is still nutrition is number one. You cannot think a bad diet. So you've got to have that in place. And then number two is you got to get the body moving and breathing. So I became an avid martial artist in sports. I mean, I was a three sport captain and got a scholarship in college and all that. And I went, all of that went from being, a, I was held back in second grade. I was a, I, you, if you saw me when I was a freshman in high school, you'd have never thought I would become an any anything I was 98 pounds you know and just that was dripping wet and but I became a three sport captain got you know all state honors and all different a lot of things and it all started with using my mind in the silver method now the silver method uses something called the isochronic tone which is part of what happens with with brain tap a lot of people don't know about that when they know about binaural beats but they don't know about isochronic tones because you can use that in an air you can use that in an open air like in a seminar so when my dad did that you know, I, I believe in divine intervention. So um, we were, we, I was working, uh, going back to school for electronics, because that was my real love was electronics. But I was still helping my dad with the more of the psychological side of it. So I kept going to school, it took me 12 years to get my PhD, because I was kind of doing it on the side, helping him with seminars and doing those things. And then I had an opportunity to join a group called Light and Sound Research back in the 80s. And we were building a clinical model. It was $10,000. There's a whole story behind that, but it's not worth telling here. In the, um, but one of our prototypes was a little tiny device that was, we're just trying to get the lights to do it automatically. Now, this is before CDs, before MP3s, before mobile phones, any of these things. So if you can imagine going to the Consumer Electronics Show, and we were like an alien you know, landed there because yeah. nobody knew what it was, but we got the best new gadget of the year in 1989. And um, so we've been doing research on this since, since 86. So uh, I, I love it when newcomers or people who do these new things say they're the only company that does brainwave entrainment in their research. No one has done more research than we have. We're, even right now, while we're speaking, seven continents are doing research on brain tap. Uh, we can go over some of those right now. And those are research projects done not by BrainTap. 
These are done by universities around the world showing that our brain can change at any age. So what got me involved in it first was I changed my own brain. I wrote a book called Awaken the Genius, which was the best uh, self-help book of the year in 1994. So I've been around for a while. Um, I used to be the new kid. I used to try to act like I was old. Now I'm trying to act like I'm young again. You know, so, <laughs> you know, that's the way it works. But the, I still don't feel like I work. I feel like I'm still playing, you know, working with my dad and, you know, playing with things. My dad's passed away now and, and everybody who was with Light and Sound Research, I'm the last man standing. But I think now in the last three years, really, people have woke up to the, the fact that we have something called psychoimmunology, which means your psychology affects your immune system. And mm -hmm. that really put us on the map because if we can lower our stress response, which actually inhibits our thinking immune system, our immune system isn't located in one place in the body. It's everywhere in the body and it's circulating all the time. Even our skin, the reactions we have to different uh, skin lotions and things, that's an immune response. You know, so pe people need to understand that. So our turning our brain, my research was primarily turning the brain off from the what, what I call the survivor brain and turning on the thriving brain. And we've identified uh, through our research, there's three times during the day that are best. Now, not everybody has to do it three times a day, but there are different brains, let's say brain styles, if you will. Some people can't wake up in the morning without coffee, which I think is a, a bad thing. Right. I think coffee's okay, but if you're using coffee to stimulate your nervous system, you're using the organic system when our electrical system is much more powerful. So what, what drives me is research and measurements. Everything we do is measured against something else. Uh, even our latest study that's being published now that we're presenting to NIH, we beat out opioids in three studies in Brazil. Wow. You heard me right. We, this was fibromyalgia, which most people cannot get relief with. We had three different fibromyalgia studies. We did it against opioids and we beat them significantly in all three studies, enough that the Brazilian government is now considering brain tap a digital drug. So they're, they're figuring out a way that they can, do, and this was done just with our app, not even with the headset. So if you can imagine how much more powerful it would be if you had the headset using light, which I'm sure we're going to get into a little bit. Yes. Yeah. The uh, sound is very popular. We used to do a lot with a group called um, out of uh, Virginia, which I lived on the road to Shipman, Virginia, um, which was doing Hemisync, which was the founders of Binaural Beats, really. They're the ones that made it popular and commercialized it. And we still do work with them. They're the, they're the world leaders probably in that field. But what we found was that just binaural beats are not enough. If your hearing isn't perfect, binaural beats don't work. You'll have a dysregulation of the nervous system. So what we want to do is how can we bring in all the rest of the senses, like retinal flashing, uh, lights in the ears, uh, that are pulsing at different frequencies. So we right. can go into all of that. So a lot of people think that our senses are just our eyes, ears, and taste and smell and touch and all of this but our basically we we basically are observing a reality that some would say is not even real and neuroscience tells us we render 80 percent of it so that means that we're making stuff up all the time just as one example for the listeners to let them know what we'll talk about a little later is our eyes take in a thousand pieces of information every second or more and but our brain receives over 10 million pieces of information from our eyes so that means we're making something up here. We're using we're we're using that logic. Our brain, being the most powerful computer on earth, is using some kind of logic that nobody understands, but it it creates reality. But if you if you remember back to a time, especially during the holidays, you might have people over and they go, "Hey, where's the ketchup?" And it's right there in the refrigerator. And they go, "No, it isn't." And then finally, someone walks out and said, "It's right here in front of you." And they go, "Well, it wasn't there a minute ago." And it really neuroscience would tell us we didn't render that. And so it's all about perceptual filters. How do we open up our perception so that we can live in an infinite field of possibility and get more results out of our out of our thinking than just, you know, kind of going status quo? I believe the combination of the five sciences we put into brain tap are what makes us different than anyone else. And of course, we were the first ones before, and we're always on the leading edge because there's always something new and better. There's probably somebody in a research lab somewhere creating something that will revolutionize the way the brain works. So you got to be open to what's out there, what's new, what's different, what's better. And yeah. we've just been very fortunate that we we have a really good research team. So we're always looking for new things like getting the vagal tone and things like that that we need to get the body working correctly. 
Okay. So I think it's really important to outline what is brain tap. Okay. We know it's an app, Mm -hmm. right? So there's the app portion. And then I have a headset here and then there, you know, for those of you who are watching, then there's also a visor. So what are the components of brain tap? Okay. So I'll put a little science into it too. So people understand why we did the things we did. Yeah. Your eyes, your eyes have 300 times more mitochondria than any other part of the body. Now the brain has the most mitochondria of any organ of the body, but the eyes, as far as space, our eyes are designed to take in light. And now we know we actually project light through our eyes. So when you're staring at somebody's eyes or you're gazing into somebody's eyes, there is an actual photaic response. Our, our genes, we now know that uh, back in 2003, when they mapped the human genome, uh, they only mapped 1% of it, which is a pretty sad state of affairs to, to go out there and celebrate. But in two, 2018, they actually realized what was the other 99% doing? They thought it was junk. There is no junk. What it is, is it, we actually have another form of communication in the body. It's through light. We are light beings, and that light triggers our epigenetic system. 99% of you changes every 40 seconds. So the reality is that you're never the same person. Your, your genetics show up either that, what I mean by that is by the foods you've consumed, the thoughts you think, the environment you're in, or you under a, a G5 tower or whatever, you know, all these different things, this radiation that's out there, your body is constantly adapting. The nervous mm-hmm. system is constantly adapting. So is your biophotaic system. So we need light. Light is the most underprescribed nutrient on earth today. Dr. Cousins said that back in the 70s, and it's only gotten worse, you know, as people, you know, don't go out into the sun and don't get grounded and all those things. So we need light. So one of the best ways to get light into the brain is through the eyes. Now, it doesn't need to be a lot of light. So we only use eight LEDs and we're using 470 nanometer light and it's flashing at a very specific frequency. And every session, we actually have over 2000 sessions now. So when you're at a thousand, we, we put out anywhere between 15 to 20 new sessions every month. Wow. Because we're, we're growing all over the world in different languages as well. So what happens is that your eyes absorb the light and through something called biophotaic exchange, that light enters into the bloodstream. Now, when it enters into the bloodstream, that light is absorbed by the hemoglobin and carried to a cell that's going through apoptosis. That means cell death. If it can get there before the cell dies, that cell will absorb the photaic energy and restart the Krebs cycle, which means the cell comes back to life. It resets itself in the same way you would reboot a Microsoft computer, that cell reboots. That's amazing. So if we want to reboot the brain, we need to get light into the brain. So what we found out in the 70s and then into the 80s was sound could do this. Sound does this. So when we think about sound, for all those sound advocates out there, we're very much into sound. I mean, and I just use in one example, let's say you and I, Sandy, were at a party and I dragged you to it. You really didn't want to go, but you said, okay, Patrick, I'm coming with you. And so we're standing there and pretty soon I look over and you're tapping your foot and you're swaying because they're playing all of your high school favorites. So that music, your your cells took the sound and converted it into energy, just like it takes light and converted it into energy. We are light, sound, and vibrational beings. So what we did in the ears, because we also know that all the blood in the body goes into the ears. And when in the rest of the body, we can circulate blood throughout the body in 45 seconds, but through the ears, it can take up to five minutes for the blood to go through there. So it's a perfect place to blood dope which means we can we can put frequencies of light and we're using 650 nanometer light and 470 nanometer light because this light mimics sunrise and sunset. And these are magical times for our gut. Yes. So when we think about our gut biome, we have a brain biome and we have a gut biome. These are very important. If you have a leaky gut, you have a leaky brain. We know that now. These two are symbiotic. There's not a difference. The one that mitigates them or controls them is our heart, which has 40,000 neutrino cells, which controls the whole show. So as we as we work with these three brains, because there really are three, we have the our number one brain is our gut. Our number two brain is the one between our ears. But the one that controls it all is the orchestra leader is our heart. That's why there's more heart attacks on Monday morning than any other day of the week. If the heart is dysregulated through something called heart rate variability, we can measure that, then 
what happens is it throws off all of the electrical system. So think about it like an orchestra that's all playing its own way without an orchestra leader. You need the orchestra leader, you know, that's not out after a few drinks, but, you know, is, is running the show. So the lights in the ears, there's something called the Nogier frequencies. Dr. Nogier was the one who founded iridology. Now, 10,000 years before him, the Chinese were doing it, and so were the Indians yeah. you know, in India. But he he created something called the seven Nogier frequencies. So what we did, these are frequencies, if our body is in tune with these frequencies, we're healthy. And they can measure these frequencies of the body. Our body literally is always singing a song. It's always in tune. We, we have this whole orchestra going on. These 75 trillion cells or more of our body are always communicating, but not the way we speak or talk. They're communicating in frequency of, of light and sound. So this field of energy that we have, we're energy fields within energy fields. What happens is we can broadcast these fields and then through something called frequency following response, the body is all, remember those, that 99% of your genetics is always changing. So it's measuring the frequencies of the environment we're in. If we were by the ocean, you and I were there and we were watching the waves and the sun dance off it, we would sink to 10 Hertz frequency. That's alpha. That's just our body would do it naturally because the, the evoked potential of a body of water is 10 Hertz. If we're watching a fire, if you've ever been on a romantic getaway and you started a fire and you started to get a little frisky, it's because at alpha, you start to produce acetylcholine. That's the feel good, the happy neurochemical more than serotonin, because it's it's one of the ones that gets you, it excites you, it's an exciter. So it basically gets you in the mood, if you will, to have fun. And then of course, depending upon your predisposition, you'll take that where you wanna go. And then if we go into theta, theta is going to produce GABA. GABA is a precursor to DMT. So if you want to have a spiritual experience or you want to have these out-of-body kind of experiences, you have to trigger DMT production. And this is a region of the brain that we've done. We've also done this with gamma sessions. So we have sessions that trigger each of these. Now we do it by immersion. So we do sound, light, and vibration. So when you're wearing the headset, all of this activity is going on. All you have to do is with the app press play, the orchestra of activities happens, and then uh, we use music. Music has been researched, you know, forever. There's something called the Mozart effect. What that means is that when the kind of music that Mozart played that now a lot of classical or a lot of new age kind of music plays, you know, without drums and they're just kind of melodical music, it creates an alpha state. But that 10 hertz frequency, think of it as neutral to the brain. Most people can get to neutral to the brain on their own. Yeah. Although we've we've not seen very many that we've tested get really good results with that. But in the uh, theta is almost impossible unless you're a master meditator and yes. you've done it a long time. So what we know is that 100% of all people using brain tap will reach theta after three sessions. 100%. We've done it with over a thousand people measuring pre and post. In the first time through, about 50% were able to reach theta. The second time through, 85%. The third time through 100%, every person, their brain. So it's because our brain is doing this already. We're not doing something that's foreign to the brain. We're just giving it different electrical and physi physiological signals. That's all happening within the headset. Now, if you have the headset, you have the light. So with vasodilation, blood flow and circulation, for those out there that are familiar with low level light therapy or lasers, yep. this, this, create, this vasodilation and blood flow has a couple of unique features to the brain. Our brain only detoxes during level four sleep. So that means if you're not getting deep level four sleep, your brain really isn't detoxing. You have to wait for the brain to have that leaky brain. And that's why the toxins build up. The toxins are going to escape somehow. And so the, it's going to show up as foggy brain, uh, headaches, different things, because there's no place for those toxins to go. But if we can get you sleeping deeply, then you're going to have those micro bursts of what they call the glialymphomic system. Uh, before 2015, and this would be the last science lesson, and we'll go on to the next question, is the, uh, in 2015 in American Scientific, they actually reported that they found the glialymphomic system. If you look at a, physio a physiology book before 2015, the lymph system, which everyone was told in school that wherever there's a blood vessel, there's a lymphatic vessel. And the biggest problem with losing weight is most people are metabolically locked because their lymph system is clogged, right? It, it's not, 
it's not working right because it doesn't have a heart. It only works when you do deep breathing or you do bouncing and jumping. And that's why many tramps and vibration therapy are so important. But if we don't, if we don't do that, what they found was that system only shows up. It's like dormant until you reach level four sleep. So that's why with brain tap, we focus so much on that deep sleep process, because when we sleep, we incubate our superpowers. So in a lot of people don't understand that when the brain is dysregulated, it's hard to sleep. And it dis dysregulated, the primary reason it gets dysregulated is stress. But that stress comes in the form of sugar, carbohydrates, uh, inappropriate eating between meals, uh, drinking alcohol or sodas, everything you put in your body, your brain is trying to regulate the whole system. Yeah. So that's why we say nutrition is number one. Because if you can take the stress of nutrition out of the equation, now your brain can work on the number two, which is getting the limb system to move, get you out there walking, moving, breathing, doing Tai Chi, yoga, something like that. And then number three is the brain fitness protocol, which is doing some kind of mindfulness, meditation, relaxation, brain tap, you know, or some device that's going to help your brain to downregulate. Because right now, most people are stuck in that um, sympathetic overload or the fight or flight kind of response. Yeah. I mean, there's so much more to this than, you know, just some sort of virtual looking headset. <laughs> so let's, let's break it down. This brain tap device can actually really help anyone who is in chronic pain, anyone who might have extreme stress, anyone who might want to work on. So for me, I have really been practicing getting into that theta mode to clear limiting beliefs, to really progress in my true self, who I am, and to really increase my creativity and to be more proactive in my business. So there's, there's, probably a million different ways in which you can go with this device. So let's get into who would this be for mostly? Like I know what I would use it for and what I have been using it for. And I can get into theta like that, yeah. which is, which, cause I've been practicing though. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I can tell when I'm in that, I also have an aura ring, which tells That's me when I'm in that, yeah. in that state. Um, but yeah, talk to me about who this would be great for. Well, the, the, the main thing we usually with brain tap, we've been dealing with a lot of, if you want to call them symptom specific things. So yeah. if somebody, um, you know, like with our weight loss protocol, we did a study where we showed whatever weight loss program you're on, we can help it to work better. Because all diets work, but the problem is that diets are designed to do, and then you're somehow going to return back to eating all the junk. Totally. And you're going to lose weight. So what we say is don't worry about losing weight. Let's get a healthy lifestyle. So we have a series of sessions that deals with basically the attitude about yourself and food. I, I just finished a protocol for resetting metabolism with a group that we, a doctor's group. We have 3000 clinics that use it. So a lot of the sessions come from, you know, one of the groups will raise their hand and say, hey, you don't have, even though we have 2000 sessions, they'll say, do you have anything specific for this? So we did. Yes. We, have, we have programs for like mind over menopause for people because we found that um, when my wife was going through menopause, that when she was more relaxed, less stressed about it. She didn't have the hot flashes. She didn't have all the symptoms of going through that. And we know that your, your emotion drives behavior, but it also drives activity in the body. So that those, those emotions can trigger the hormonal system and we can show that. So mm -hmm. we have like our golf team, we did three years in a row. We helped the golf team at Seminole college win the national championship. And now uh, my husband would like that, Patrick, I got to yeah, tell him about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So what we did was we, we actually started tracking them in school. Now we're doing a whole program with the whole sports team down at Seminole college, where if you go to their website, you'll see, they have a whole web page set up for brain tap because they use it for recruiting because their highest GPA is the girls golf team. And now they're having all the rest of the sports teams use it because it's going to accelerate their capacity to learn, remember, and recall information. So they were doing it for golf and then all their grades improved. And I said, well, that's what happened to me. You know, my dad kind of taught me how to use it for sports. And then my grades went up because your brain doesn't discern once it learns how to work in one way, just like doing just meditation. If you, if you really master meditation, 
your relationships improve, your, your totally. health improves, everything gets better. So we have over 43 different genres, if you will, from weight loss to stop smoking, to stress reduction. We have anything you can think, we have neuropathy because the clinics use it. But on a personal level, we also have, um, like I'm doing a program now with an all-star shortstop for Arizona who wants to do one for baseball. So we're going to, we have them for sports because we work with a lot of Olympic athletes. We have the Olympic uh, bobsled team using it. We're working with the hockey team in Massachusetts, the women's. We helped them last year get to the Frozen Four final, but unfortunately they lost in the overtime of the final game. Hopefully this year, we're giving them all headsets this year. So last year we did it with just the app. So we're giving them all the headset. We're going to be tracking them because it's very stressful to go through these tournaments. You know, you're you're not you're not at home. You're you're eating differently. You know, how do you stay positive? So I mean, the the nice thing is that there's probably something for everyone because. Even when somebody asked me to go, do you use it? I said, I've not missed a day since 1986. You know, so because everybody has stress. And what I believe is that when you eliminate stress, like you were saying, you're in this infinite field of creativity, expansion. We even took my favorite business books. There's a series called Wake Up Audio, where I took my favorite books. And instead of having a summary that you read on paper, I do the summary through BrainTap. Because Ooh. and so you have a summary of the business books and there's Think and Grow Rich, there's The Power of Thinking Big, all my favorite ones. And then we did this because I'm also the dean of brain-based wellness out of Quantum University in, in Hawaii. And we help energy medicine practitioners uh, get their, their doctorate in uh, natural medicine. And then they can sit for their boards, you know, in uh, Vegas. And so I'm one of the professors there. So we took their courses instead of having them review their notes, I've created their notes in a brain tap session because when you're in alpha and theta, the nice thing is that we now have something called hypernesia or super memory. So we know that your brain literally stores, organizes and compartmentalizes information differently when you're in the less stress state. A lot of people think they got to cram and stress and learn, but that we find that you have a lot of slippage in the brain when that happens. You need to be more relaxed and comfortable with the information, and but then also be willing to almost like squeeze that information out of your brain during a test, you know, so you can, yeah. because it's all about neural pathways. Where's the information? Can, do we have access to it? Everyone, believe it or not, has a perfect memory. It's their recall <laughs> that isn't there because of stress. And that happens to be the hippocampus. And as we, they, they say that like the year of covid that the average brain shrunk three quarters of an inch because of stress so we need to keep that that's important for the brain to de-stress and drink plenty of water because it's a hydro engine you know and and get the body burning more fat than sugar and your brain will work better i loved what you just said at the beginning of this about weight loss because i actually recently i i am an rhn i'm a registered holistic nutritionist but i recently became a certified metabolic balance coach. And the one thing I said about my program is I'm like, please don't come and think of it as a simple diet. You need to change the inside. You need to work on your internal thought processes and brain tap. I did do some of the weight loss um, programs because I wanted to see what this was about. But I'm always like, you got to work on the inside first. So, you know, like you said, food, and then there's, you know, your, your mental state. What do you think of, of weight loss? Are there limiting beliefs there? Right. And you said that this can actually help you get into theta mode. Well, isn't theta mode the place where reprogramming happens? Right. Yeah. We need to take it from the conscious level, what they call the, that's when you're, unconsciously incompetent. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And so when you go through that, the levels of learning, when you go to conscious incompetence, that's more of an intuitive state. That's more the alpha mind. But when you get into that unconsciously competent state, that's the theta mode. And then you want it to be unconscious. You just want to do it. It's just a part of it. You know, and so all of that happens. So you want to accelerate that learning. And we know that visualization accelerates that learning. And when I was featured in People Magazine in 2006, we were featured because we had sent them over 100 people that lost half their weight, kept it off for more than five years. And I used to have a weight loss franchise. And so in in the process, they said, what's your diet? And at the time, 
we didn't have a diet. I mean, but because we that was our, our USP, right? So we didn't have that. So, but but of course they went on diets. Some of them went on some crazy diets. It still worked because, but it's not going to work forever unless you get on a healthy diet. So now we have we recommend a lot more. You know, we're we're teaching nutrition, but back in back before two thousand five. The diet wasn't so bad. It was bad, but not as bad as it is now. I mean, most people eat out of cans and wrappers and they give ingredients you can't read and the body is so congested. And yes. I mean, this is a whole different time period than when I had my, I sold my franchise in 2002. So, you know, back then you could just tell somebody restrictive diet and you'd lose weight. And then we tell them all you have to do is just, you know, if, if you don't, um, if you gain two pounds, then you do a two or three day fast and you're back, you know, or something like that. But those kind of things don't work anymore because the body's so dysregulated that you need a, you need a, like you're doing, you need a metabolic reset. And there are, there are people out there like yourself that have these formulas. So what we do is we're the mental side of those. Yeah. So uh, we don't ha actually, BrainTap doesn't have a program specifically, but what we do is we do the mental side and we have 54 sessions for weight loss that are very specific. Like if somebody's I'll give a couple examples. Let's say that you work at a place where you have that one person always has candy corn on their desk or some form of candy and they're pushers. You know, they, they we call them diet saboteurs, right? So we have a program turn diet saboteurs into diet supporters. It's really about being assertive and asking, you know, being selfish. You've got to, you got to take care of yourself. And then we have ones that are called a weekend weight loss because a lot of people do good during the week, but then as soon as there's no week anymore, the weekend, the wheels fall off. And so it's, it's basically all very specific. Like we have ones that are how to, how to celebrate parties and picnics. Like we tell them, Hey, go and, you know, do, do a protein drink before you go to the event. Mm -hmm. So you're already full. That way you're not going to be tempted. You can then go, you can go graze on the vegetables or whatever, or the fruit or whatever you want to do that's, that's live foods. So that's where we're at. And then we have our clinics, people like yourself, Sandy, who will take out of the 2000 and pick out, these are the sessions that are going to make my program. So this is what my people are going to listen to. And then they share the brain tap with their, with their group and they start using it. And that's, that's really how we we're going to get to a billion brains. We can't do it on my own. I've got to have people like you, Sandy, who are sharing the message out there to the world. Oh yeah. See my, all, all my lights are turning on right now because I know that there are certain things that you actually, it's like, it's, okay, tell me this, is this kind of like almost subliminal messaging? Well, you know how you, you uh, buy a car and you think you've made this special, unique purchase that no one else had ever bought this. I still remember my wife bought a van when our kids were younger. And she said, this is so cool, this caravan. Nobody has one. It's so special. And I said, I started laughing. She goes, what are you laughing about? I said, let's go for a drive. We saw at least 15 of these vans just in our <laughs> drive home. But, but when you're not aware of those, we call it top of the mind awareness, right? When you're, when you're really like when somebody's into nutrition or they're into physical fitness, Everything they see the world through this eyes of nutrition, or they see the world through the eyes of fitness. Yeah. When when somebody's like when they have the low energy, they're depressed, anxious. Unfortunately, that also creates when they say frequency, it's what you frequently see. So think yes. of frequency like that. So when you're thinking of frequency, what are you frequently seeing? Well, if you change your frequency, you change what you're seeing. So this is what BrainTap does. It puts these things in the top of your mind. Now, when you look at a piece of food, a plate of food, or even a drink, and I'm telling you to use an NLP, they call it submodality. So our brain processes this. Things we love and enjoy, like think about something you really love to do, Sandy, something that you don't, nobody has to twist your arm. If, if you have the time and the energy, you'll go, you just drop everything and do it. When you think of that thing, it's probably almost like one of those, uh -huh, you know, you got the music in the background, the lights come on, everything happens. You know, if you, you have a good friend or you're going to go do something with your husband or whatever that's that you've been waiting or anticipating doing and you finally get to do it. The, the dopamine hit actually happens because the planning part of it, not the doing part of it. That's why I, I tell people, remember in college when you were going to go out with your friends and you're getting all ready, you're getting all excited. Then you get to the nightclub and you're going, oh man, this is not what I yeah, want. It was, yeah. it was so exciting before you get there because that's when the dopamine is raging through your body and it's, it's getting you excited. But what if you could take that and 
and then trigger more of the creativity. Like you're saying, when you're in that creative state, most people don't know when you're in the creative state, you're triggering more alpha activity. You're creating that acetylcholine and the other 54 different neurotransmitters that are making you feel good. If you're in the high beta state too much, what happens is your body has to rob those neurotransmitters, you basically get a deficiency of those neurotransmitters and you get an imbalance in neurological activity. So we have to have those very high times and then we have to have the low times, not the low depressive times, but the relaxation times. We need the recovery. I think recovery is the biggest piece that people are missing in their wellness because they think it's just about goal striving, go, 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 get, get, get. The reality mm -hmm. is that we need to take time to recover from yes. everything. We even need to recover from being too happy all the time. We need, that's not, they know that's not healthy either. Um, although that's a better way to be ill, I think, is to be, you know, God crazy rather than to be, you know, yeah. um, depressed. I think it. You totally just hit something there. Really, it's always about balance, mm -hmm. right? And I say this all the time. And, you know, even with dopamine, I, I remember hearing this once, I think it might've been from Dr. Amen. You don't want to be constantly looking for that dopamine rush. You want to just drip dopamine, right? Um, and, and then there's, and then there's exactly what you said. You know, you don't want to always be up. Sometimes you need to be down. Sometimes you need to feel different emotions. We're not beings that are meant to constantly be up here. So I love what you said. And with brain tap, you kind of, it's almost like, you know, let's face facts during COVID, a lot of this has become dysregulated and maybe a lot of it has to do with technology as well. It's not just COVID. It's all this blue light. Like we're always watching TV or on our device or on our computers and zoom calls and Right. So it's like there's this mass dysregulation in the world right now. Right. Yeah, we're working on a we're working on a profile for gaming because we've done te we've done uh, scans, brain scans on these professional gamers. Most people don't know that for a professional football team, they have employed professional gamers that play all week against the other team. And there's more gambling going on in those games than there is in the real pros. And these guys are so crazy. They wear diapers because they're so into it. Oh my so they, god. They don't want to get up in when we did their brain scan, you think they were doing crack cocaine. And then so we decided let's do this on kids. And most parents will tell you if your kid is playing computer games, they're pretty useless afterwards. That's yes. because their brain becomes dysregulated. So we're we're working on a clip that's like the, like the aura ring like we're both wearing that's something like that that we can clip on somebody using like parents can put their kids on it and when their brain gets dysregulated the game shuts off until they do like a brain tap session get their brain back balanced and then they can do it again but the problem is they're getting so stressed out because believe it or not uh there's a movie called rain man that came out a long time ago when, when i know Hoffman, that movie they, they dropped toothpicks on the ground and dustin hoffman says a thousand four hundred and twenty three or whatever and he goes how do you know that he goes i counted them well that's the, his brain that the brain he was playing right the 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 savant everybody's brain does that it's just, it's not useful for us. So we don't remember it, yeah. but we're doing that all the time. So like when I'm looking at this computer screen that I'm looking at this widescreen computer screen, a million or a billion pixels changing, my brain is trying to predict because that's what our brain does. It tries to predict the future all the time. So while we're sitting in front of that computer screen differently than a CRT, like the old TVs, where it was more of a flow state, this is literally every little pixel is changing. Our brain is trying to guess all the time. What are those pixels going to do? So it becomes very stressful for the brain. Now, just like PEMF or just like EMF, I should say, some people don't get, doesn't damage them. Only 20% of the people have really EMF poisoning, but it affects 100% of the people. You know, it will have an effect on our cellular, what they call the cell danger response. So, but what happens is some people, it gets so bad, they can't, if they look at a computer screen for more than 15, 20 minutes, they start getting a headache. So yes. they, have to wear the, they have to wear the yellow glasses or the red glasses. Yeah. And things like, so this is all because of our, our power. Our brain has never seen this before. You know, frequencies from the sun it's seen or we've experienced since the dawn of mankind, 200,000 years. But yeah. now in the last 30 years, 
we're being exposed to not only chemicals that are in our foods and things like that, but also our technology is our, our body is responding to that. So now we know we're not separated from our environment. We're symbiotic with our environment all the time. Our body is changing. Who we are is changing. Now, I think eventually our bodies will adapt in a way that technology will be fine. But how many thousands of years will that take? You know, and then whose genetics doesn't make it? You know, that's what's happening right now. We're finding out who's got the genetic profile. Right now, everyone watching this podcast, you are the genetic lottery winners. You know, your ancestors made it from the Big Bang to now. You know, you are the genetic prodigy of all this anticipation. Now we're we're really, some people would call this like the, the fourth extinction, really, because of all the what's going on on the planet. We are Certain people are not able to handle it. So how do we do that? We have to downregulate. Because when we downregulate, we actually increase our energy field. There's, there's fields of energy that, that they used to say, think were metaphysical, that nobody believed in. But there was a study done. I guess I should put it in this way. Most everybody right now knows who Tom Brady is, right? He's a football player here in America. Yep. And he has clothing called TB12. This clothing was designed by my science officer. Dr. Francisco Cedral. And what he what he found out was what he did was every person, he's he's a specialist in biophotaic uh, energy. He wrote the chapter for Dr. Hamlin at Harvard. So that's why I hired him. He's the he's the master of all this. You know, he's he's a he's a super brain in in photaic energy and, and things. But what he what he realized was every person on earth transmits 8, 10 nanometer light. So you got to kind of wrap your head around that. Every person on earth is broadcasting one of the most healing frequencies of light known to man. They People pay big money to sit in infrared saunas, to sit in, to yeah. use low level light therapies, to use yeah. lasers, and every person on earth is a laser. You are broadcasting energy. So they did, and so what he did was he took ceramics and he patented it and he put it into clothing. It's called TB12 recovery wear. And your own body's healing energy reflects back to you. This is just one so step cool. in, in our evolution. And we're we're designing some clothing for brain tap because he's with me now. So that has this because it's not, he doesn't own all the rights anymore. We can do that. But the, the reality is that you, Sandy, as when you walk into the room with one of your clients, your energy is changing who they are. I you're speaking my language, so Patrick. And, and, and now it's not metaphysical anymore. This is actual science. They yes. did a study during COVID where they showed that two they they had 200 people and the people that were had a more positive attitude when they tested them they were more their propensity was to being positive over the people who were more pessimistic. Love the it. positive people actually transmitted 200 times more energy in the form of light from their heart than the people who were pessimistic and negative. So when you think about, you know, the negative people almost become like energy vampires. They, they, they're Funny. out there, they're trying to get your energy and that the other people, there's an infinite amount of energy. So the, those people that are, if you want to call them in the light or in the no, or in the positive, they realize that we are like acupuncture needles. We, our job is to bring light to environments. And if you're around the same people, there's a synergy of light. There's a synergy of energy. That energy is changing that person. Like when somebody says, why does hands-on healing work? We now know. We transmit energy. They, they can show this now through the hands, through the heart, through your knees and the bottom of your feet. These are natural like energy spaces where the, and through our eyes, uh, what you're looking at when you're gazing at someone, you're actually, you're actually giving them photaic energy. So when we see these ancient pictures or like of Jesus or Buddha or anyone like that, they always have this corona discharge around them, you know, this aura. We wow. all have that. It's just most of us can't see it. But at Silva, when when I took Silva with my dad, if you grew up in my neighborhood, you would come over and come to an aura reading party because we'd have our friends come over and you could put a white sheet behind them with a candle and you could see their energy fields. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot more here. And I think we're just at the forefront now, because back in the 70s, when we were doing this at my house, we were crazy. 
you know, this was nuts. You know, in growing up in Battle Creek, Michigan, you know, it's it it wasn't like California or something. It's more something like you do more in Southern California than you would do in <laughs> in Battle Creek, Michigan. But I'm I'm so blessed. You know, I I never forgot that. And you know, we would do it all the, every once in a while just to have fun with people to show them because once you see it with your own eyes, you can't deny it. You know, it's 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 real. You're oh, you're so speaking my language because I've been, and you know, I think that sometimes my family thinks I'm crazy because, you know, I have been into muscle testing and uh, energy and all of that for many years. When my you're gonna laugh at this one, Patrick. When my daughter was little, and you know how little kids when they come home from school, they're like it's like they're flying right? They're really hyper. They're really like, woo, out there. I would sit down with her. I would look into her eyes and we would face each other. And I would just tap my toes on top of her toes. And I would look at her and I would ask her a question that was not a simple yes and no question. I'd say, who did you have lunch with? Who did that? And her it's, I was grounding her, right? Mm -hmm. Grounding her energy. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing we as humans in this day and age, we become dysregulated. So even though I'm an adult, that's almost 53 years old, I can also become dysregulated, right? Because I'm on the screen all the time and I might not be playing video games, but I'm always on social media and I'm always talking to people. So what do I do? I do what I can to reground and then I'll do a brain tap session and say, okay, what do I need to work on to bring me back down? Because I could feel it at this stage in my life and how old I am. I know when I'm dysregulated, right? But little kids don't. So I have to ask this because we're talking about technology. We're talking about EMF. What are we looking at as it relates to EMF from this headset? I have to ask well, the question. Well, the nice thing is that um, I actually have my regulator here. It's zero EMF from BrainTap. It comes from your phone, though. Uh, but uh, Dan DeBond wrote the book Radiation Nation, and I'm on their board because in his book, he I says, interviewed him. So I love which, him. He's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So when you go to his website, I'm there. But he, what they say is the first thing for EMF poisoning is brain tap. Because you got to get your brain back regulated. Because what's happening is the brain is constantly trying to get the cell danger response to come down. And also grounding is so important. So what we've done is uh, we actually have grounding blankets we use because Clint Oprah is one of my friends too. So we, we, we know that you can lower that inflammation by doing that. But what we, what we found when somebody says, why are you using blue lights in the ears and the eyes? We know that blue light, the whatever the frequency is, the 470 nanometer light, it neutralizes the EMF. Mm-hmm. When we put in other light, it didn't have the same effect. Now we do have some some headsets that are coming out in the in the future, hopefully within the next two years, that are full spectrum light that change light frequencies. All of our sessions are already programmed for it because we have the prototypes for it. But there's um, light has a lot to do with it because light is frequency. So, and, and when we're when we're talking about the pulsing light in the ears, it's not a sound frequency. It's actually that light is pulsing at those frequency numbers. And then the brain, just like looking at those toothpicks, like I was talking about, your brain discerns that those healthy frequencies and puts your body back into homeostasis. That's the key. Okay. Now that's amazing that you're, you, you and Daniel Devon work together. I love that. Um, he's brilliant, by the way. Um, I want to ask you about childhood programming. So I have, you know, I've, I've actually been hypnotized. I've been like, you know, I I'm into all this stuff very much. So Mm -hmm. can brain tap help with child programming with PTSD, with trauma, like, can it help in those areas? Cause so many people have limitations. I thought I had a bad childhood up to my, when my dad got help <laughs> until yeah. I started doing therapy. And then yeah. I thought, wow. So we have a program called uh, Adult Survivors of Child Abuse. We have a whole program for that, a whole series. And it was actually designed by a doctor in Toronto with oh. me, uh, Dr. Michael Irving. And they use it at the at the hospital there, at, tr- at the one of the Toronto hospitals. And he also helped me do the heart program, the healthy heart program. Um, 
he's he put together a monument for uh, adult survivors of child abuse there in Toronto. So the whatever we make off that program gets donated to that fund to help those people. Is um, he at Sick Kids? Toronto Hospital for Sick Kids? Could be, could be. I'm not sure. It's been. A, I'm gonna have to look into that. He yeah. sounds familiar Michael, to me. Michael Irving. Yeah, he's he's very he's a he's a, a licensed psychologist up there that, that we do a lot of work with. I've done three programs with him, but we also have a PTSD program that's not for the. We have one for the military, of course. We have one that's not for the military, but all of our sessions when in therapy, one of my books is called "Discover the Language of the Mind." And so it, being a psychologist, I've, I've been trained in everything from NLP to hypnosis to any kind of conceptual therapy, all these kind of things that are out there. And yeah. the um, what I did was I have 12 core techniques and I write about them in that book. So I'll just give you a couple examples. Number okay. one, you can never be a behavior. The number one law of psychology states you can't be a behavior. But what do they do every week in all over the world is they stand up and say, I'm an alcoholic. I'm a child abuse. Yeah. So what they're doing is they're affirming. So the first thing we need to do is disassociate from them. You are not your past. You're not even who you think you are in the present. I just said just a little bit ago, every 40 seconds, 99% of you changes. So you're not even the same person that started this conversation. So, but people, I, in my book, I say, I call them dragons of the past because people want to drag them on and drag them on and drag them on. because it's kind of like wordplay. But the, the yep. reality is we first need to disassociate and realize that you are a divine child of the universe. You have every right for your happiness, your health, your vitality. It's not determined on someone else or something else. It's not part of doesn't matter where your bring, upbringing is because there are people that are born in you know, fourth generation welfare families that. They get out of there and they become healthy and happy and they become successful in their own way, whatever that is. And there are people that are born into opulence and they spiral down into depression yep. and anxiety. So it's a it's an inside job, right? So number two is realize that you inside have what you need to succeed because in, there's a saying, all unhappiness stems from unfavorable comparisons. So if you think about how we're brought up, the the Western world, Oh, you got a new car? Oh, I'm unhappy with my car. It's two years old. It doesn't smell new anymore. I get in your car. Now I got to go buy a new car, even though maybe I can't afford it. But because you got a new car, I got to get a new car. Or maybe the ads on television show these happy people with their new car. So now you got to get a new car. So that 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 relationship in the mind, we got to change that. You are a universe of one. There is no one else like you in the known universe. There will never be anyone like you in the known universe. So if we can build your self-esteem, your self-confidence, you'll stop comparing yourself to others. There is no comparison. There is no other Sandy. You know, you are you are the top of the rung, you know, but people don't know that. So number number three is we need to teach you how to disassociate or reframe those negatives and then reassociate those positive. And it goes back to that old saying, we have to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. It's easy to say, but difficult for the subconscious to do. When Bruce Lipton says, who's a good friend of mine, he also teaches at Quantum University. He says 95% of what we do every day is controlled by our subconscious, 95%. Yes. So yes. we can, if we're only gonna control 5%, then that's our thinking. We need to control, you know, it's like we can we can get on a roller coaster and complain about every corner and every dip, but we got on the roller coaster. So enjoy the ride. You know, don't complain about it. It's your ride. And what we and there's 12 of those different techniques. So when somebody's listening to the brain tap, they think it's just word soup, but there's literally an embedded metaphor and a change pattern put into every session. And everyone is a little bit different. So people that know therapy, they'll listen to them go. I can't believe you packed that into that program because I'm going to teach you my, my dissertation was done on non-contextual therapy, which means I don't need to know what your problem is to help you resolve it because I believe it's all about thinking. We have lost our capacity to think. Everybody is looking for someone else or something else to tell them what to think, how to think, who to be, how to become mother, brother, teachers, preachers. All these people have set us up. And this is the, this is the most abusive thing that has ever happened to us is because we we try to become convinced even i was brought up catholic right and i'm glad i i, I like my catholic upbringing it was good i had a good catholic upbringing but not everybody did right but the the catholic church is fond of saying the benedictine benedictine monk said give me a child to their seven and i'll give you a catholic for life and that's true with every religion or any social 
convention, right? Whatever your parents did with you or whatever you spent your time doing for the first seven years, you either accept it or you rebel against it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So, but once you realize you don't need a breakdown to have a breakthrough, life gets better. And that's what I try to teach. You don't need a breakdown to have a breakthrough. You can have a breakthrough daily. You just have to realize, you know, even Paul in the Bible says, you know, he dies daily. What he was saying was he doesn't conform to the past for his present or his future. The past is just a set of circumstances that we happen to live through, but your power is right here. Yes. You have the power to transform right now. And your future is not set because there's an infinite amount of them. I, I believe in the infinite field theory. So you, there are, you know, somebody says they create their reality. This is where I differ. All realities are already created in an infinite field of possibility. We don't have to create anything. That's the joy of this. We get to experience the reality that we want. So through our magnetic attraction, through our thoughts, ideas, concepts, and beliefs, right down to our genetic makeup is magnetic. So we're magnetizing that, quote, reality, but it's already there. You know, that's why when, when you know, the same people can go through the same schooling, the same twins can go through the same schooling, and one can be successful, the other one cannot. It's all about perceptions and how they do that. So if you, if you live your life knowing that today is a wonderful day, we're going to have a great podcast, we're going to entertain people, we're going to give them some information, and this is going to be one more thing that's going to help us reach a billion brains. Like, that's how I wake up. What am I going to do today that's going to better a billion brains? Every day I do a recording when I'm home. I want something that's going to outlive me to be in existence. And mm. I taught that to my daughter who's doing it now. So, you know, either writing a book, I'm always writing a book. I've got another book that's coming out. But it, there's you know, you only have so much time in a day, so you got to figure out. So I budget my day. If I didn't budget to make these things happen, and I wake up two hours early for myself, because you got to be selfish. You got to take care of yourself first. Yep. You, know, you, can't, you can't be out there taking care of the world, and then you're you're the one that needs the most help. You know, you, you can't be flailing away without a life jacket. You got to have your life jacket on and do your thing. Yes. No. Wow. You know, there's just so much power in a lot of the things that you just said. First off, Dr. Bruce, was it Dr. Bruce Lipton? Yes. Mm -hmm. Biology of Belief? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I read that book. He's brilliant. Yes. And then, you know, I, I find it really interesting what you were talking about association, how, you know, when you go to one of those groups, like I am an alcoholic, you know, my name is and I am an alcoholic. You know, what are your thoughts on that whole concept? Like well, I, I wrote programs for DUIs for the state of Arizona. Okay. And they asked me to do that because of my background in addiction, but they wanted right. to have accountability. You know, they used to make them go to AA meetings. Right. I think, I think AA is a part of the process. You have to recognize you have a problem, obviously, but most people miss out on that step where it says you need a psychic change. Yes. That, that means a change of the mind. So yes. once you know, the old saying is once I was a child and I played with childhood things, but then I became an adult and I had to get rid of my childish things. The people don't realize that you don't have to keep once you overcome that. If I get a broken leg, I wear a cast. I tell people I have a broken leg. But once my leg heals, I don't say, you know, I had a broken leg. I don't tell everybody, hey, I had a broken leg. You know, they had a broken brain. They nobody can drink. You just have to know some people can get away with it. You know, and I might have a glass of wine every once in a while, you know, with somebody, but this holiday I didn't at all because I was uh, working with my daughter on her metabolic reset. So I wanted to make sure I did everything healthy around her. Not, not even, you know, we had fake wine, you know, that we do with the yeah. kids, you know, so they can do their toast. But the, the reality is that even race car drivers, professional drivers can't drink two drinks and perform at their optimum level. So that right. tells you that there's certain things. Now you can get away with it, but then you have to pay the piper. Somebody's going to have to pay the next day to get your body back regulated. And some people choose to do that daily. You know, I'm, I'm actually being interviewed on TV now about um, what they call dry January. And uh, oh, some yes. people do that, you know, in what, how many drinks should you have a day? And one of the research I've, I found was if you have one drink a day, your brain will shrink three quarters of an inch over the course of a year. Just one drink. Because yeah, I've sugar. heard that. Yeah, it's it's sugar, right? So sugar is the biggest 
culprit to our health right now. If, if people go, what's the one thing I can do to better my brain that is simple? I'll say, it's not anything you need to do. It's just stop doing is stop drinking all of the beverages with all the sugar in it. Stop adding sugar to everything. There's already enough sugar in everything that we eat. And in our liver, they don't understand. Like some people go, well, I don't understand why I'm fat because I don't eat any sugar. And I go, do you get stressed? And they go, yeah. I said, did you know that stress is more fattening than chocolate? And they go, what do you mean? I said, your liver produces as much sugar as a candy bar. So if you're not dealing with your stress, it doesn't matter if you're not eating sugar, your body, we don't even need sugar. Our body will create as much sugar as we need, you know, yeah. but people don't realize that they think we need like there's no uh recommended daily allowance of sugar you'll never see that anywhere because mm -hmm. we don't need it our body produces all the sugar we need we're fat burners we're not we're not sugar burners yeah i know over the holidays i actually assessed how much sugar was in a starbucks drink that my daughter was drinking and i actually and she's like don't you think that's a little exaggerated, mom? I'm like, well, because I was like, oh, God, like that's what is just it, like 40 sickening. teaspoons or something or what? <laughs> oh, my God. So it was a venti vanilla <laughs> um, vanilla latte with caramel syrup, 66 grams of sugar. So back in the day in the 70s and 80s, our poison was having a Coca-Cola, right? Yep. It was and a Coca-Cola is like 35 grams. So this is almost double, right? It, it's anyway. And they so, wonder yes. why there's a lineup there that's very addictive, right? The, the body, what people don't understand is the body's intelligence, that subconscious we talked about, that Bruce Lipton was talking about, it starts to predict your future too. So it yeah. thinks, oh, you have a venti every day at two o'clock. Most yes. people know the, the reason that they do that at two o'clock is our temperature drops two degrees every day around two o'clock, it's part of our biological reset. So what they used to do in the Serengeti is we'd all take a nap. Yeah, we do in America is we go to Starbucks or, or somewhere or we do coffee, tea, sugar, something. Also at night, you know, if your brain's dysregulated because at two o'clock at night, your temperature increases two degrees. But if you have a dysregulated brain, it will accelerate that and you'll wake up, throw all the covers off and go, oh, I'm hot, I'm hot. Because your brain didn't regulate for sleep. Yes. Now it should only go up two degrees, but if it goes three degrees, now you have a temperature shift that your body's saying, you've got to wake up, you're in danger. Mm. So your, your brainstem wakes you up and you're sweating and you're wondering what's going on and you think you have a sleeping problem. No, you have a uh, brain that's dysregulated. We need to teach the brain to stay in that sleep cycle and get you that adequate sleep that you need. So the way that I really see this as just amazing is well, first off, you know how you, I'm going, I keep going back to this whole alcoholic, I, you know, my name is, and I am an alcoholic. So it's almost like the first step is to have a little bit of self-awareness, right? Cause that's like what they do in Alcoholics Anonymous. It's like, okay, I need to know that I need a little bit of help. And sometimes that help might come from you. Sometimes it might help that might come from somebody who loves you or whatever. And then you can start working on a device to help rewire that. So you no longer are in almost like a victim consciousness, like, oh, poor me, I'm an alcoholic. And, and you want to step away from that after and rewire. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, most people don't realize, I mean, just like a diet we were talking about, you can go on a diet and lose weight very quickly, but what are you going to do when it's over? That's what AA is. It's great wow. to get you off the alcohol, get the support, realize you're not alone, that other people are going through it. But then if you if you constantly stand up and say, I'm an alcoholic, you've got to start drinking again at some point. You know, AA has never had a research study done that is more than 2% effective. 2%. Yeah. Placebo is 40 so they're talking themselves out of the change. Yeah. Just like uh, just like my profession is there's never been a study in psychology that's better than 12% because they're talking people out of the change. You know, it's it's like you don't you can't keep they call it exacerbation right with the uh, revivication too where we take a memory and we relive it. That's what's happening with those traumatic experiences. We have to repack it differently. We have to distort it, delete it, and change it in a yes. way that supports us. That's why in my book, I in my one book, I have a chapter. It's, I was blessed to be the son of an alcoholic because I had to reframe that. If I say, poor me, my dad was an alcoholic, I'd have to be at those meetings too. 
but I don't, I don't drink like he did. I don't live my life like he did. There's something called a dry alcoholic and there's, there's dry dieters too. Like they, all the time they're on their diet, they're talking about the foods they're going to eat when they get off their diet. Well, that's saboteur. That's being a saboteur. Yes. Those foods are the, what caused the problem. Those were the villains. You know, you need to bless them, move on. You know, you're not going to eat them anymore. You know, and if you do eat them, you've got to find a strategy where you're going to slow down that sugar, right? Because yeah. it's the sugar that derails our thinking uh, in so many ways. And it's it's so insidious. You know, a lot of people don't realize that Kraft that bought all of the research from Reynolds Tobacco, because Reynolds Tobacco found out how to make cigarettes addictive by using natural substances like sugar. A cigarette is 8 to 18% sugar. So when somebody is addicted to cigarettes, they think it's tobacco. It isn't. It's a really no, it's a crystalline substance. They're burning low grade crack cocaine. It's sugar. It's been cured. The tobacco has been cured. So it's the sugar they're chasing, not the tobacco. Because I didn't know this. Yeah, if you took the tobacco from one pack of cigarettes, you would die immediately. Your body would never be addicted to 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 nicotine. That's not why it's doing it. It's the the driving. Because if you look at those natural cigarettes, you give those to an addict, they won't smoke them. Because they don't get the same dopamine hit. Makes sense. The same, because they're that's the tobacco. That's what tobacco, like the, the American Indians didn't get addicted to their peace pipe. You know, they had it for ceremonies. They didn't have it for everyday use, you know. And so they're and they're now finding that there is some real um, you know, value to tobacco in in small quantities, you know, especially nicotine for um, a lot of biohackers are taking it. I wouldn't be yep. To be a negative, a negative the nicotine one. gum but it's like the cleaner one i've heard of it yeah so i yeah. mean there's it's it's really bizarre how but people when you start to distort your thinking because you'll start to justify with emotion your behavior just yes. like some people say emotion drives behavior sometimes you know the the addict will produce the experience first they have to set up the environment you know, uh, I the best best example is PTSD. When somebody's in, in a wartime scenario and their brain has been programmed for war, so they can stay alive. You know, they're going to be they're going to be in such a high sympathetic drive. Yes. Now they come home, they're having their celebrations, their homes, everything's chaotic, and they love that. But then, as soon as two or three weeks is over and they're back to being calm and, and everybody, you know, is back to the normal life, they start to. They have to raise the energy around them. They have to raise the chaos so they can feel normal again. But yeah. it's really about their brain getting back regulated because it's our brain is patterned. It, it finds a behavior. It seeks its own level. So what we do, just kind of round out the conversation so people understand. In the morning, we need to increase a brainwave called SMR, sensory motor rhythm. That's the one as we get better looking and more intelligent with age, that's the one that atrophies. So we need to keep that one really going. That's what we call digital coffee. So as we age, that one atrophies. So our balance goes off, our cognition goes off. That's first thing in the morning. It's only 10 minutes. In the middle of the day to offset that two degree temperature difference, you need to reset your biology. So we have sessions. That's the theta reboots we have in the middle of the day. Now you can listen to those anytime you want, but if you were doing it therapeutically, this is the way you would do it. And then at night, we have ones that just drop you into Delta and put you to sleep. Because if your brain is, a lot of people will... They're, they're tired. They finally make it to bed. They hit the pillow and their eyes pop. Yes. Open. Yes. That's, and that's, I, I believe it's because of high inflammation in the body. The body is, they're tired because the body has all this inflammation. They've been pulling this parachute all day long. They're not metabolizing or digesting their food. Now they're laying in bed. Now they don't have to worry about all the physical needs of their body. Now their brain finally says, now we can deal with all this mental stuff. And mm-hmm. it's not the time to do it, right? So their beta brain kicks in. We need to train that brain to create some good sleep hygiene and get them sleeping deep again so they can regulate their brain because it's during sleep that the brain really repairs itself. You know, that's when it gets that long-term repair that it needs. And it's also when we take our hippocampus takes in all those short-term memories and makes some long-term memories that we can recall later. Uh, that's why a lot of people, as they age, they'll remember things that happened 30 years ago, but they won't remember something that happened this morning. Right. Because right. their hippocampus has been damaged through stress. They need to they need to re-engage that part of the brain to get it to work again. 
I ha- I can't leave this conversation without asking the question about pain, because a lot of people have chronic pain. You know, arthritis is obviously huge as we start to age. There's people who have arthritis. We know that, you know, I know as a nutritionist that there are things that you can do nutritionally to help, but um, it's not going to necessarily cure it. And then there's fibromyalgia and all of those. You have specific programs for pain, correct? <laughs> Yes, excuse me. The The whole thing that we found, this equipment was actually designed for pain clinics. So you can imagine okay. back in the 80s, there was no neurofeedback. That didn't exist. There was no way to measure the brain like we can today. But we did have what we called the biophysiology. So we, we knew that if the hands got warm, that the headache pain would go away. If they could, the longer they breathe out, the more they're their parasympathetic kicked in. So we could look at respiration, skin temperature, heart rate, blood pressure, uh, all those things as biofeedback. That's what we were doing. And we were looking at how could we get the brain, because the believe it or not, your body only experiences pain in one brain wave, beta. So if we can minimize beta, wow. you'll be out of pain. Not that, not that you're not experiencing some discomfort in the body but when you have alpha theta and delta going at the right amount of dose, it's like it's not a perfect synchronicity you should have about 45 percent beta 30 percent alpha about 10 percent theta and less than 10 percent delta if possible so in the in the, it's kind of a we call it a symphony of brain waves what happens then is those neurotransmitters are regulated in a way that you're not in pain because the reality is we should all be in excruciating pain just walking across the floor because of our bone on bone and everything that happens. But because we're we're chemical factories, really, our brain is the most powerful uh, pharmacy on earth. It's dispensing these neurochemicals based on what we need. And as we get older, unfortunately, that neurochemical bank account gets wore down and we're not producing enough, especially if we have a poor diet, because where is it going to get the substances from? Unless you're, you know, an alchemist, you're, you're not going to take a candy bar and make something healthy out of it. You've got to have right. you know, fresh green leafy vegetables. You've got to have whatever adequate, you know, it's, it's not what we eat. It's what that food turns into, right? Amino acids and uh, yes. all the other things that we need. So yes. those are the building blocks of our body. So when, when the building blocks are available and our brain is operating at its highest level of efficiency, now we have what most people would consider anti-aging, which means we're aging slower. You know, the the um, one of those one of the myths that's out there that I'm still trying to find, but they talk about all the time is the chicken heart that was kept alive for 30 years at Harvard, where they said that they gave it the right light, they gave it the right nutrients, and they detoxed the cells of a of a of a chicken. They kept it alive for over 30 years because. They, that's where they figured out this thought trauma toxin thing where they're talking about is if you can get the toxins out of the body, our cells are designed to live pretty much forever. They said if the janitor wouldn't have turned off the lights, those cells would still be alive today. So the, the reality is that our body is not designed to age as quickly as we think it is, but because of our lifestyle, you know, even though our lifespan over the last two years, of course, it's been less, but before that, we were living longer, but that's because of all the, we didn't have as many crib deaths and things like that. But the reality is that there used to be a lot more hundred year people living to a hundred years than there are today. But mm-hmm. we have, we, we're going to see more and more of that because people like the biohackers, nutritionalists, you know, people like that are realizing, hey, you just can't put whatever you want in your body. You know, you can't, you know, all these ingredients, just because you can keep it on the shelf for 30 years doesn't mean it's good for us. You know, right. that's what's happening. And eventually, just like when I was talking about when Kraft bought all of Reynolds um, addictive, the food addictives, all of our food has been, there's, they call them excitotoxins. I'm sure your listeners probably know about them. These are foods that are chemically manufactured for addiction. And, you know, yes. I say anything made by elves, you shouldn't eat, you know, so you, you just have to make sure that you're not, you're not, if, if you can't read the ingredients, then you probably don't want to eat it. Yep. You know, <laughs> so, you know and yep. the best food doesn't have an ingredient label on it. It's, it's bought on the perimeter of the grocery store. So, you know, those are the things that are most important. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I always just to try and make it easier for clients. I say, if it's got more than five ingredients, put it down. Like even still, like just 
the less, the better. And, you know, even going back, everything old is new again, right? Like the old ways. I, I have parents who are Eastern European. They grew up on farms and they're both still alive. My dad is 85, going to be 86 this year. And my mom is 76. And I hear a lot of their old ways. And I'm like, this is the way for longevity. But in our world, it's really difficult to go back because like, you know, like with that, that's why we have to learn how to hack it, right? With devices like brain tap and think because we can't live like my parents lived in, you know, 1940 on a farm. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It used to be in the 50s that most people fed their families from their family farm, even if they had it in their backyard. You know, yep. now, I mean, I remember growing up working at the grocery store and they would always have a fall tanning, you know, you know, thing that they did at the store that we were at. They would bring in all the canned goods and the people would come in and they would teach them how to can their vegetables and fruits yep. for the winter. And yep. now it all comes in a can. Of course, we don't, we just go there and buy it. And then we don't know what's actually in those, in, in those ingredients. Because they're, sne- they're sneaky with the way that they label things, you know. Yeah, it's 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 like we, you know, we now if we want to not just live for lifespan but live for health span, we have to figure out ways in which we can do that and try and make everything old new again as much as we possibly can, but then we have to bring in technology which seems like it's counterintuitive, but we have no choice now because this is the world as it is right now. And I was when I when I and I I've got a cut this off here in just a few minutes but the yeah. it's been great the uh i was at the ames institute in india the all indian institute of medical sciences which they do a lot of studies with us and i remember dr varun going when i first introduced the to him i was going on a college tour teaching them about brainwave entrainment and things and he said well that's cheating mm-hmm. and i said really i said have you ever used a candle he said, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, I said, well, that's cheating. I said, what do, you, he goes, what do you mean? I said, well, that's the technology of the day. A candle flickers at 10 hertz frequency. That was our model for our first LED. Wow. So, but it can't change frequency. It's only 10 hertz. I said, have you ever meditated in the mountains? Oh, yeah, because all the gurus do that, right? Yeah. And, I, and he says, yeah, that uh, that's it's all. I said, it's pretty peaceful, right? I said, well, you're cheating. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, you went to an area of the planet. If we were to go from outer space to here and look at the planet, it would be a 0.5 to hundred frequency. That's called the earth frequencies. So the mountains are 7.8 Hertz frequency, which they call the Schumann frequency. That also happens to be theta. So when nice. you're at the tree lined meditating, your body resonates. I said, that's cheating, but it's not really cheating. It's using what's around us. It's yeah. when we look at our cities, when you go into the mall, like during Christmas season here and all that, those malls are operating at 18 to 22 cycles per second, high phonetic energy. Some people won't even go into them because yeah. they get violently sick or they start to get agitated because they're they're so empathic, you know? Yes. Uh, so, so some people just won't even do it. But it, the reality is that it's affecting all of us because our body's always matching. Remember, it's always matching our environment. That's part of the epigenetic experience that we're going through every every minute of every day. Yeah. Well, okay. I know you have to go. So tell everybody, where can we find you? What's the best way to find out more and to get in touch with BrainTap? Yeah, well, you can go to braintap.info and there you can download the app for free, no credit card necessary. And you can get a copy of my book, Thrive and Overdrive, which will explain a lot of what we're doing. Now you can follow me on social media at, at Dr. Patrick Porter, at Dr. Patrick Porter or at BrainTap Tech. Those are the two social media sites. And then, of course, our website is braintap.com or drpatrickporter.com. Mine just feeds you back to BrainTap. I mean, I have some information there and things that I share on my site. And I have YouTube and all those things, too. If people want to hear more, uh, you know, we have a lot of snippets, you know, little videos where I'm explaining different things. But, um, yeah, I love I love what you're doing, Sandy, and love to support what you're doing. 